Hello, can you guys hear me? I'm not sure if I'm live yet. Welcome everyone, hello. My name is Crystal Nierman and I'm with the Dog Psychology and Training Center. And today's Facebook Live is going to be about preparing your dog for baby. Um, so if it's your first child, things can be a little scary, especially with not knowing what's the best way to bring baby home or prepare dog for this big change that's about to happen in your life. So um, we had just found out um, a few weeks ago that we are expecting um, our fourth child. And so um, what better time to do this video? And we've actually had a couple clients reach out who are all expecting um, a baby. And they also had some, some questions and, and some concerns about what's the best way to go about all of this. So we are just going to, um, it's gonna be a two part series. So this first one is going to be about preparing your dog for baby coming home. And then part two is going to be about baby coming home and what you need to know about that and what steps to take to make sure you have the best introduction possible between your dog and baby. So um, we're gonna go ahead and just get started here. Um, and I have some notes here so I could stay on track. All right. Um, so I think the most important commands that you need to teach your dog before baby comes um, are having your dog calm down and be calm without you forcing your dog to be calm, without telling your dog to be calm, um, having your dog calm down when you tell them to call that calm down. Um, so rough playing, um, which is what we call enough, um, or you can use easy, or you can use settle. Um, it just means what you're doing isn't wrong, it's just too much of it, so take it easy. Um, place means go to this object and stay on this object until I give you permission to get off. Leave it and drop it. I think they're pretty self-explanatory, but don't touch that and spit it out right now. Um, sit on command and to stay in the set command until I give you permission to do something else. Up, if you let your dog up on the furniture, um, we recommend, we kind of learned this the, the rough way, uh, but um, our miniature schnauzer, Pepper, he was the only dog allowed on the furniture because he was our smallest at 20 pounds. Um, we had two pit bulls and a mastiff when we brought home our first baby. So um, Pepper was the only dog allowed on the furniture. And I remember I sat Alaska, our first child, on the couch because um, she was like a day or two old, couldn't roll off yet. And I was just running over to the table to grab something for her. And Pepper almost jumped right on her. Um, he just wasn't paying attention, didn't expect there to be a baby. And then up he went. And of course, he startled her and she started crying. And as a new mom, it was very stressful because I'm like, oh, she just went to sleep. Are you kidding me? Um, but we learned, okay, so new rule put in place. Pepper is not allowed up on the furniture without invitation. So teaching your dog how to wait by, by doing a sit command um, on the floor and staring at you, that's them asking for that permission. And then if we wanted Pepper to come up, we could say up and we'd actually pat the couch wherever we wanted him to jump because Pepper was blind, so he couldn't see, but he could hear. So if we patted the couch to the left of us, he'd go around to the left to sit down. If we patted it over here, um, not having to worry about if baby is sitting or laying on the couch, um, where Pepper's gonna be. I can always pat and tell him where I want him to jump up instead. So teaching an up command, if you do let your, your dogs on the furniture, um, and then having areas off limits um, from your dog or items. Um, and so these are all the commands I think are most important to make your life easiest when baby comes. And I'm going to break them down even more, so don't worry. Um, but having these commands put in place now before baby comes, and you may be tired, you may be grouchy, uh, you may have some morning sickness or some acid reflux or just general, I'm pooped, I can't move, I'm so tired. Uh, but I, I, I swear to you, doing this work now before baby comes is so worth it. Because when baby comes, all time just dissipates. Whatever free time you think you might have, it's gone. I swear, babies have this sixth sense, at least mine did, that if I was trying to nap or sleep, they'd wake up. <laughs> so I could be holding them and they would be sleeping. And it's so sweet. And I think, oh, I'm just going to rest my head back here on the couch and I'm just gonna close my eyes and take a nap. And as soon as I would start to drift off, they'd wake up every single time. Um, so the whole uh, 
tip that everybody gives new moms, sleep when the baby sleeps. I tried. They just wouldn't let me. Um, and so that time just won't exist. So take advantage of it now while you have that baby in your belly, you can control it um, and you can get some things done. So settle the dog. This is the exercise that teaches your dog how to calm down on their own. So we want your dog to practice calm before the baby gets here. And I want your dog to practice being calm on their own without you physically restraining your dog into a big bear hug to calm them down, or you giving them a command like the enough command to calm down. And there's a purpose for that, but the settle the dog exercise just gets your, bo your dog's body, its mindset into a state of calm. So how to settle the dog work. It's very easy. It's one of the easiest commands to, to teach a dog. And it's not even a command per se. It's more of a way of life. And so how we teach this and how we recommend our families teach this for their dogs is to have a six foot leash on your dog in the house. And as you sit down to watch your TV shows or um, read a book or get on your laptop on the couch or scroll on your phone, have that leash, sit on it. You're just going to sit on that leash. But I want you to give your dog enough slack that he can lay down at your feet and that leash is still a little bit loose. So I don't want your dog, if he's trying to lay down, I don't want you hanging him, okay? Like I want him to have enough leash that he can actually rest on the ground and the leash isn't like pulling his neck up in a way. Um, the other thing I don't want is too much slack in the leash. So I don't want your dog to be able to walk two feet away from you and sniff and spin and do all these things. I want his, I want his freedom to be restricted a little bit so that your dog gets bored really quick. And when your dog is bored and they are restricted and they have nothing else to do, guess what? They lay down. And if you have a active breed or a dog that is more active or mentally active, so maybe they're not physically active, but their mind is always alert and they're always pacing in the house and they're always just waiting for something to happen or wondering what's going to happen next, that dog needs to practice this exercise more than any other dog in the world. Um, and so by limiting their freedoms, by restricting that, that space you're giving them, eventually they're just going to lay down because they're going to be like, well, this is bored. And when they're laying down is usually I give them the first time. Um, it can take a while for them to lay down. So if this is a, a dog that is very active physically or very active mentally, um, it may take you 40 minutes maybe a little bit longer before they, they finally let out this sigh of boredom and they're like, oh, okay, I'm going to take a nap. Um, when they do that for the first time, I usually, depending on the dog, I can wait 30 seconds or a minute and then I just slip that leash out from underneath me and that's it. Whenever the dog gets back up, he's free. He can walk around the house. Um, but I just try to be very subtle about that. Um, after we do this a few times, so this is something you can do one to two times a day, three times a day, every day, five days a week, as much as you can squeeze it in before baby comes. Eventually, you're going to sit on that leash and your dog's going to be like, oh, we're doing this again? <laughs> laying down. And then we can start extending that, that staying calm, laying down. And so it can be five minutes, 20 minutes. Um, 20 minutes is usually the max. Um, and I'll slide that leash out. But let's say we're going for the 20-minute mark and your dog tries to stand up at 10 minutes. I don't let the leash go. <laughs> I don't let the leash go until that 20-minute mark. So your dog might get up at 10 minutes and think, okay, can we go play yet? Nope. Okay. I'm laying back down. So while your dog is doing this, you do nothing. You don't talk to your dog. You don't look at your dog. I mean, you can peek at your dog, but don't like stare at them and give them straight eye contact. Um, and don't touch your dog. So no talking. Try not to make direct eye contact, but obviously you can glance down there and check on them and no physical um, um, contact and, and no talking. I don't remember what I said already, but those three. Um, so this is a very boring exercise for your dog. There are going to be times you don't want to talk to your dog. You don't want to touch them and you may be able to make eye contact with them, but you don't want to arouse them to the point that they're like, oh, you're making eye contact with me because you want to play? Let's party because baby's sleeping. Okay. Or you just need a break. Okay. And so teaching this exercise now will prepare your dog for that. Um, a lot of our clients have already done this because this is an exercise we do with all dogs that come in for training for us. Um, I think this is an exercise that all dogs need to be capable of, even those that are not expecting new babies at home. But if, especially if you're expecting a new baby, if you're already done this exercise, do it again and do it a lot to make sure your dog is prepared for being calm when baby's here. Um, place. So place is probably my second favorite command to enough 
But place just means go to this object and stay on this object. Dynamic feel to them for dogs. Um, you can use um, fireplace mantle, anything your dog can fit on that's not too big. So like an area rug, too big. Um, but the benefit of place with new babies is you can have your dog be close to you, but not be afraid that your dog's going to try to jump on your lap with baby in your lap or try to jump on your baby uh, because they're laying on the ground doing tummy time. And that was when I was doing tummy time with my kids, Morgan, our Mastiff, loves kids and she always wanted to be involved, which I loved, but she's huge, right? She's like a hundred pounds and my little baby is like six. Um, okay, my babies are like seven to eight pounds, but they were so little compared to her. And so I didn't want her to paw them because sometimes that's how she plays with other dogs and she'll kind of paw them. And she doesn't paw hard, but to a little baby, it's going to be hard. Um, she's She's got a lot of wrinkly skin. So like her skin could like melt over on the baby. I mean, there's just all these irrational things that kind of go through a, a new mom's head. So I would have Morgan place right next to tummy time. So her head was right there watching the baby. She was so into it. She wanted to know what was going on. But I didn't have to worry about Morgan rolling over on top of my baby, laying on my baby, stepping on my baby as she was walking through. It just helped contain Morgan. Um, and this is beneficial for little dogs too. Even if you're not afraid of your dog stepping on your baby and hurting it because your dog's so little, that space is respect. And a mama, a new mama dog, when they have puppies, they don't let any other dogs come near those babies for a while. And that's because it's a natural instinct to protect your young, right? Because they are helpless. Start to interact with those puppies and they can start to engage in playful behaviors because the puppies are initiating that they are ready. And that's very true for human babies as well. Our dogs never tried to play with our human babies or even come up to our human babies. When I say come up to, I mean like within two feet of them. Otherwise they'd keep about a two feet distance and just would lay close to the babies but not close enough that they were touching the babies or laying on the babies. They would just be in their presence. But when my baby started crawling is when the dogs would actually get closer because they knew that the babies were capable of engaging. Um, and so there was that play aspect. So place is a really fun command. The enough command, um, that is my favorite command. And I use it a ton and it is for excessive anything. So you have somebody coming to your door and your dog barks. That's actually very nice. I want your dog to keep barking to let you know new people are here. However, when you say enough, that's it. You are the owner. You are the adult. You know what's safe and not safe. And if you say enough, your dog has to trust you and stop barking. It's a lifesaver if your baby's napping. <laughs> My kids were all around dogs their entire, my entire pregnancy. So in utero, my dog, my babies were around dogs barking. So luckily my babies have never woken up from dogs barking, but we never let dogs bark excessively. So if somebody came to the door, I'd let them get one or two wolves in. And then I'd say, that's enough. And then my dogs would stop barking. So nap time was never disturbed. Um, we use it for excessive playing. My dogs can play freely whenever they want. If there's a baby on the floor doing tummy time, I might say enough. Hey guys, now's not the right time, right? You might accidentally run over my child or you might bump the swing or whatever it is, like enough. It, just, it means what you're doing isn't wrong. It's just too much of it right now or it's an inappropriate time or um, excessive licking for like hot spots and stuff like that. Um, that's enough, okay? One kiss is fine, too much is bad. Um, and so that's the enough command. Leave it and drop it. These are going to be lifesavers with your baby's pacifier, burp rags, um, possibly diapers, um, toys. Baby toys sound and look just like dog toys. Um, and so teaching them this leave it command and drop it command are imperative to your sanity. Leave it just means don't touch it. Your dog starts sniffing or, or walking towards an item and you can just see in their eyes they are thinking about taking it. Leave it. That's it. Just say leave it. Um, and having a leash on your dog to guide them and make sure they leave it. Um, drop it as if they actually do get something in their mouth. Start with their toys, things they are allowed to have in their mouth, but work on that drop it command. Um, and so if they do steal a baby's, one of your baby's items, you can say drop it and know that your dog's not going to eat a dirty diaper because they'll try. Or uh, ruin uh, one of their toys by shredding it because they might. Um, but it just gives you that peace of mind to know your dog understands what you're asking it to do and will, will comply. Um, the sit command I think is really nice. So if you are holding baby and dog wants to sit by you, having them in a sit command is a lot safer um, than the stand command. A stand command, your dog can quickly jump. Your dog can kind of lean in um, into the baby. 
Um, and there's just more risk for risque behavior. Um, so having that sit command just helps your dog be in a calmer, um, having their body be a little bit calmer in the presence or close presence of your baby. Um, we already talked about the up command and teaching our dog that if you want them to be on the furniture, they can only be up now from this day forward before the baby comes by permission only. So if your dog, excuse me. I was gonna, there. I was gonna sneeze, but I think it left. Okay, sorry. Um, but the up command, if your dog does sneak up on the couch without permission, again, you're having this leash on your dog all the time in the house while you're home. Man, is it coming or not? It's right, you guys. So if I sneeze, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm trying. <laughs> I have a tissue ready, but I don't know when it's coming. Uh, but having, if your dog, so let's start with the leash, sorry. The leash is going to be on your dog during all of this training time before baby comes. So when you're home with your dog, the leash is on because it is basically your tether. If your dog does steal an item that it's not supposed to, you can quickly pick up that leash and control your dog until they drop it. Um, if you don't have the leash on, well, if you're like me, um, the more pregnant you get, the less mobile you get. And so you're not going to be able to catch your dog, right? And so they're going to quickly realize that. And then it becomes a big game of catch me if you can, because they know you can't. And it's very frustrating. So having that leash on, I'm telling you, it's still worth it. If you're not home or if your dog goes outside to go potty in a fenced in backyard, please, by all means, take the leash off. But while you're home in the house with the dog, the leash stays on. So if your dog does sneak up on the couch without permission, you just grab that leash and walk away from the couch and it just pulls your dog right off because they didn't ask for permission. Um, and so they start to realize, oh, it's not stable if I jump up on the couch without. But if mom and dad tell me it's okay to get up here, I do actually get to take a long nap and it's very comfy. So that's the up command. And then off limit area. So when we had our babies, um, I actually have a mild dog allergy. So I don't let dogs in the bedrooms because they are carpeted. Um, and so I just don't want to have to be sneezing all the time while I'm trying to sleep or if I'm playing with my kids on their floor. Um, I just don't want to be sneezing um, and have burning eyes and itchy faces and itchy noses. So I just set a boundary. Our our first nursery was our library. It used to be a library. I had bookshelves in there and all of my books and it was so beautiful. Um, but then when we started preparing for baby, all of that came out and then we started putting in the crib and a rocker and some baby toys. And at that threshold, we, from that day forward, the dogs were allowed in the library because I don't normally lay on the floor to play. Um, that day forward, we said, nope, sorry, you guys aren't allowed in here. And so we just set that boundary right there. So if you have an off-limit area in your house, like the nursery, that you don't want the dogs to go into, now is the time to set that boundary, even though baby's not in there yet. Um, and actually, I didn't even have to really set that boundary. As I started putting up the crib and other things, the dogs just stopped coming in. Um, I don't know if just the mess of me trying to put all these things together was enough to make them be like, no, nah, it's not worth it anymore. Or if they just know, because dogs do know when you're pregnant by yielding is like if I walk into the room and they're playing they stop and spread <laughs> so I can walk through them to the couch like they just know I was I was big and I wasn't stable um and so I always I was especially loved my dogs for that but um but I didn't really have to maintain it because they just in instigated that so from that day forward I just said nope if they tried to come in I would just say nope and they're like okay just check in um so off limit areas but also off limit items um I see cute pictures on Facebook of dogs getting in baby bouncers you know those little little seats that are on the ground that have like a metal base and the baby can just like bounce in it like this um I've seen cute pictures of dogs laying in those and I think oh <laughs> Um, it's really hard for dogs to differentiate when they can and cannot get in there. So if there's a baby in there and they just feel like, huh, I want that bouncy chair, they're going to lay in there with your baby. Um, and it may be cute to see these pictures on Facebooks, Facebook, but to me as a dog trainer, I see a lot of things that are wrong. One, a big dog especially could smother a baby. Two, if a dog is laying on an item like that, the dog might become possessive over it. And so when your baby's in this item, or you try to approach this item with your baby in this item, your dog could become aggressive or reactive to you um, because now they are saying this item is their property and they are going to let you know that. Um, and so there's a lot of things with that. I just don't let my dogs be near it. Um, they can lay beside it, but they don't need to be pawing at it. They don't need to be sleeping right underneath it. Um, there's this space aspect. Remember I said space is respect. I am the mama dog. 
I'm the mama bear in the house. And the dogs knew that. And they just started to respect these things. And I just had to maintain it. So if you maintain this from day one, it's going to be a lot easier than if you've let your dog lay in these things and be around these things. And all of a sudden are like, okay, now I need to change things. So it is going to be a little bit more work in that case, but it's still quite possible and it is still quite worth it. So don't give up. Um, let's see, what else do we want to go through real quick? Decrease attention. Um, so this is really, really a big one because when baby come home, when baby comes home, big changes happen, right? Um, all of your time, remember I mentioned that that weird word time as a mom, you don't ever have any more time. Um, and so um, the time that you have for your dog right now, like cut that into a 10th um, because your babies are very demanding, rightfully so, but they do take up so much of your time and they are very needy in a very good way, but they need that, that constant contact from you. And so it's very hard to be handling a baby, holding a baby, feeding a baby, nursing a baby, and trying to walk your dog or trying to give your dog attention or playing tug with your dog. Um, and so right now is the time to start gradually decreasing that attention. So start practicing social um, spatial distance. So I want your dog to learn that it's okay to sleep on the other side of the floor. They can sleep at your feet too, but I want them to know, I want them to have this independence that when the baby comes, they don't need to be right there with you. If the baby's annoying them because it's crying, they can go lay on the other side of the room and that's perfectly normal. But in order for them to know that's okay, you need to start teaching them that now. Um, so place command, having your dog place on the other side of the room while you're sitting on the couch for 15, 20 minutes. It's an easy exercise to do. If your dog breaks that command and tries to run over to you, just grab their leash and walk them back and say no place until they get back on. And then just continue that timer. You don't have to start back over. So if they get up at 10 minutes, take them back and then just continue the next 10 minutes. You don't have to start back over at 20. So um, having them start practicing that, that distance from you. But then also start to gradually give less and less attention. I don't want you to completely neglect and ignore your dog. But if you are the family that um, your dog is the center of your world right now because it is your only child and you're giving them all of this undivided attention, that is going to be a rude awakening when you get a human child who is very demanding and demands all of your attention. Um, and so start practicing, you know, when your dog comes over and wants to play tug, sometimes say no even if you can right now, because when you have a baby, you can't. And I want them to start understanding that this time that you have for them is changing. Um, you know, I do still want you to engage with your dog. I still want you to play games with your dog and walk your dog, but it's important to start doing less and less of it because when the baby comes, especially at first, those first few months postpartum, you're not going to be up for doing a whole lot of anything. So if dad wants to continue walking the dog every day and playing all these games, that's totally fine. But you as the mom, I know your attention is going to be just completely um, wrapped up along that, that new baby. So just start practicing that, that distance, um, or not distance, um, that time, that time in decreasing your attention to the dog is super beneficial. So when that baby comes, there's no animosity to the baby. Like you didn't need any attention or, um, that just like instant depression because you've suddenly cut off your attention from them. And they're like, Oh, does nobody love me anymore? If you start doing this gradual, de gradual decrease, your dog may still miss some of these play sessions, but they're still getting some. And so it's not such a, a hard change to be cut off completely on day one versus just this gradual decrease. So, um, so this is all the things that we recommend. Oh, one more thing, super important. Get a diaper genie or a diaper pail um, that has a lid that completely closes that your dog cannot open because they do love diapers. Um, if you think about mama dogs with their new babies, um, they puppies don't wear diapers, but it's mama's job to keep the pen, the whelping box clean. And so she is constantly licking up their pee and poo, and that's completely normal for mama dogs and dogs in general. Um, so diapers are like, oh, you have a waste here? Here, let me take care of that for you. Um, so they're trying to do your favor. It's just a gross favor. So to eliminate all of that, get a diaper genie or a diaper pail. We loved our diaper genie. Put the diapers in. It just puts it down in the bottom thing so you never smell it in the house. And it was always right in our living room, but the dogs could never get to the diapers. So that's a win-win. That's my, my mom tip advice for, for all you new moms with dogs. Get a diaper genie or a diaper pail or something similar that that does close and seal off that that diaper access. So, all right. So these are my my 
my go-to things to do before baby comes to start preparing dog for that arrival. Next week, we're going to do post baby, um, how to introduce your dog to baby and what type of things to start engaging your dog and to prepare for when baby does become mobile. So, um, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Um, I hope this video was very helpful to you. If you know somebody who's expecting and you think this would be beneficial for them, please share it with them. Um, and if you have any questions that you would like for me to talk about next week in next week's video, um, please just post that in the comments and I will peek at this before I go live next week. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining and I hope to see you guys all next week. Bye.